Recently, I was walking through our school during a class period, and usually when that's going on, it's the halls are completely empty, and I turned a corner and saw this young man, probably second or third grade, walking down the hall, just kind of meandering, and I said, what are you doing? He said, oh, I had to take some things to the office for my teacher. Well, he was nowhere near the office or his homeroom. And so I said, what are you doing here? He said, oh, I just wanted to take the long way home. And I thought, well, this is kind of clever. He does what he's supposed to do, but then takes the scenic route home. And for him, the main thing was that he did what he was supposed to do. And I think most of us think that too. I mean, what is it we do? Even when we meet one another, we often ask, what do you do? Or what have you done? Or where do you work? Or where do you live? Or something like that. There's always this sense of action. Who are you and what do you do? Well, our gospel today gives us a wonderful kind of plan for what to do. We see these lepers who are crying out to Jesus. And then what follows is kind of a, a template of what Christians can do in terms of prayer and of working out their Christian life. First of all, they request. They are not ashamed to ask Jesus out loud, have pity on us. They know that they are held in lowest of esteem by the people. They know that their people are frightened of them. They know they have a terrible disease and they're probably suffering greatly. And so they scream out to him, Jesus, have pity on us. They request something from Jesus, trusting that he's going to listen to them. But then there is more. Jesus tells them a curious thing. He says, Go show yourselves to the priests, which seems kind of useless. People show themselves to priests all the time, and they would have known that, and they would have known that the priests would not have wanted to see them because they were contagious. They were supposed to be outside the city. They were certainly not to go to others because others would flee from them. But that great line is just a little phrase in the gospel as they were going, which means they immediately responded to what Jesus told them to do. So we have this request, have pity on us, a response, which means that they're listening and they do it. And then finally, there's something more. There's a healing. They're given something that maybe they didn't even really think that they could have completely. As they were going, they were healed. And so there is this wonderful moment of healing. So there's this request from them. There's a response where they do what Jesus tells them. And then there's this gift, this gift of healing. But there's one more part. And nine of them don't follow through. The follow through is gratitude and showing Jesus thanks. And the one Samaritan comes back to say, thank you. He's the only one. And it's so stunningly weird that even Jesus remarks on it. Has no one else come back? Not that Jesus needs that thanks from us. He does these things out of love, but it's saying thank you that helps us, helps us realize how fortunate we are to have a Lord who loves us so deeply that he will touch us and heal us and change our lives and give us the transformations that we need, that he cares so deeply about us that he listens to our prayers even when we shout at him, have pity on us. We come together then time after time in the Eucharist for that final part, the thanksgiving. That's what the Eucharist means. That's why we're here, thanking God for the gifts that he gives us over and over again. 
Because if you think about it, what we do here at the Eucharist is very much what those lepers did. We begin, we ask God to hear our prayer, and then we respond. We hear the word of God. We share in the Eucharistic meal. We pray with and for one another. We receive what God wants us to receive. And we have to ask ourselves, are we always open to what God wants to do? Sometimes it's a challenge. And then finally, we say, thank you. Our final words of the liturgy, thanks be to God. So today, as we gather for this liturgy, for the Eucharist, and doing whatever it is we do, whether we go straight there and straight back, or over there, and then take the scenic route home, we are all doing it in the presence of a God who loves us more than we could even ask. Let us thank him for the opportunity that we have to have such a relationship with him that we can request something, we can respond, we can receive something more in healing and peace, and then we can say thank you. What a wonderful Christian life that is.